Hey guys, it's Miss Castres again. So as usual, our daily routine is to begin with our heading. Write your name, date, grade, and section. Also remember that you have to write down your objective and your I can statement. Your objective for today is to understand characters' traits and behavior. And your I can statement is I can analyze the story. And when we talk about analyze, it's basically reading the story and being able to annotate and answer the questions that come along with it. So the name of our story is The Flight of Icarus, which is a Greek myth retold by Sally Benson. A little bit of background information about that. Today we think of myths as stories that have been passed down through countless generations. In the ancient civilization of Greece, myths were the basis of an elaborate system of beliefs. Myths explain their mystifying world and offered wisdom on how to live in them. Um, the myth of Didelis and his son Icarus is one example of that. Now, let's set our purpose for this story. As you read, pay close attention to the choices Icarus and his father make. What do these choices reveal? Write down any questions you may have while you're reading. So we begin with the first notice and note signpost that comes right after paragraph one and two, which is right here. So we read one and two, and then we come to analyze the genre of the story, which is myth, annotate by highlighting the details in paragraph one and two that states the problem Didelis and Icarus face. So we're looking for the problems that the two main characters have in paragraph one and two, and we're going to highlight those. Once we've done that, we can draw conclusions. How do you think Didelis plans to solve the problem? Why do you think so? And this is based on the problem itself, so we're going to be inferring through that. So we answer that question, and we move on to paragraph three. We read, we analyze, and we do the same with paragraph four before coming to our next part. We have, again, analyzed the genre, which is myth, and we're going to annotate in paragraphs three and four, and you're going to highlight the words and phrases that show that Didelis is happy about the work he and his son are doing. That's what you're going to be looking for. Once you've found that, you are now going to infer by answering the following questions. What do these paragraphs suggest about the kind of family interactions that the Greek culture valued? What does that mean? Based on Didelis' happiness with his son and the work that they're doing, we want to take that information and infer the type of interactions in old Greece and during the Greece culture back then families have. So we answer that question. Then we have a close read video. We're not going to watch those because the close reads video basically just tells you to take, uh, you know, time and really analyze what you're reading. And we're already doing that. So we come to paragraph five. We read carefully. Remember, as you go reading, you are going to find critical vocabulary. In this case, we found the word moderate. We're going to go to the next one, which is words of the wiser. So this is our notice and note in paragraph five. You're going to highlight the warning that Didelis gives Icarus. You're looking for the warning that he's giving his son. He's telling him something really important. So you want to find that in paragraph five. Once you found that, then we're going to connect by answering the following question. Why might Didelis warning suggest about one theme of this myth. What might Didelis warning suggest about one of the themes of this myth? Because remember what we discussed earlier on in another class, there are multiple themes to this story. So there's not just going to be one. And based on those certain little points of information that you get or certain points of the story, you can go analyzing the different uh, types of themes that you're going to find here. So once we've answered that, we're going to move on to paragraph six. Again, we have a critical vocabulary word, prowess. Then we have paragraph seven, which also has another critical vocabulary, frantically. And we keep going, and we'll come up out to our language conventions. Annotate. Highlight the example of coordinate adjectives that appears in paragraph seven. Once you've found those examples of coordinate adjectives in paragraph seven, you're going to interpret. The question is, what does the comma in that example tell you about those adjectives? So you take your time and you really analyze that. 
And then we come to paragraph eight. Again, we have a critical vocabulary word, which in this case is anxiety. Paragraph nine. And now we have a text focus video for you. So everyone, please pay attention. The last sentence of this myth is important because it hints at the story's theme. Remember, a theme is a message about life or human nature that a writer wants to share with readers. However, the sentence includes language that might make the message hard to figure out. So let's read it again. And he mourned for the bird-like son who had thrown caution to the winds in the exaltation of his freedom from the earth. There's an idiom here that you may not be familiar with. Throw caution to the winds. An idiom is a statement that has a meaning different from the meaning of its individual words. So to understand the idea of Icarus throwing caution to the winds, you have to see beyond the meaning of each word. So think about it. When you throw things to the wind, like, say, a bunch of leaves, you are going to lose them and not get them back. They're just going to blow away. So when Icarus threw caution to the winds, he threw away his carefulness or self-control. He ignored his father's advice and completely gave up on being careful. Now look back at the sentence again. The writer uses a pretty rare word, exaltation, to describe Icarus's actions. If you guessed at the word's meaning and came up with happiness, you were pretty close. But looking it up in a dictionary and carefully reading the entry will give you a much more accurate meaning. This second meaning seems to fit the context best, a feeling or state of intense, often excessive happiness. Intense means strong, and excessive means too much. So exaltation is the feeling of being way too happy about something, like being crazy happy. So what theme or message do you think the writer is trying to suggest? Scan back through the story and reread the parts that describe Icarus's actions. Then find the details that connect to this last sentence. Doing so will help you answer this question. Why might throwing caution to the winds be a bad thing? So I hope that video helped you guys understand a little bit more about what we call reading between the lines, which is, you know, breaking the words down and really understanding what the author is trying to tell us. And then finally, we have determined the themes. Annotate, mark the sentence in paragraph nine that relates directly to the main theme of this myth. Once you've done that, it's time to critique, which comes from the word criticize. Why is the placement of this sentence effective in emphasizing the theme? So take your time, guys. Really read, really analyze. Make sure you understand everything. And before, you know, before you write down those answers that you think are the best ones. Well, that's it for me again today, guys. I hope you enjoyed reading The Flight of Icarus. Mythology is one of my favorite things. Um, I would suggest that you look into more Greek myths and Roman myths. Um, it's really interesting once you get to really get hooked on it and really start reading those. You'll, you'll probably enjoy it. All right. Have a great day, guys. Bye.